Howdy folks, we're back today with another YouTube video. We uh, have been talking about the Holy Spirit and uh, how separate and distinct the baptism of the Holy Spirit is from the Spirit of God in conversion. Two different things, two different workings, two different ministries, but the same Spirit. Uh, now we're going to be talking about baptism in the Holy Spirit. Baptism in the Holy Spirit, symbols describing it. Baptism in the Holy Spirit, symbols describing it. We're going to be talking today, as I said, baptism in the Holy Spirit, symbols that describe it. Baptism in the Holy Spirit, symbols describing it. The baptism in the Holy Spirit, the baptism in the Holy Spirit is sometimes referred to as an anointing. Uh, the baptism in the Holy Spirit is sometimes referred to as an anointing. We're going to look at this. 2 Corinthians 1, 21. 2 Corinthians 1, 21. Second Corinthians chapter one and verse twenty one. It says, Now he which establish us, he which establishes us with you in Christ, and has anointed us is God. Now he which establishes us with you in Christ and has anointed us, anointed us, is God. Emphasis added. There's that anointing. So the baptism in the Holy Spirit is sometimes referred to as an anointing. 2 Corinthians 1, 21. Now he which establishes us with you in Christ and has anointed us is God. That anointing. 2 Corinthians 1, 21. And then we have 1 John 2, 27. So let's go there. 1 John 2, 27. First John chapter 2, verse 27. But the anointing, there it is again, folks. But the anointing which you have received of him abideth in you, and you need not that any man teach you. But as the same anointing teacheth you of all things, and is truth, and is no lie, and even as it hath has taught you, ye shall abide in him. Praise God, we are abiding in him. And then that was first John two twenty seven. Then we have Acts ten thirty eight. Acts chapter ten verse thirty eight. Acts chapter ten. In verse 38, how God anointed, there's that word anointing again, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. So the baptism in the Holy Spirit is sometimes referred to as and anointing. 2 Corinthians 1 21, 1 John 2 27, and Acts 10 38. To the Jewish mind, to the Jewish mind, and to the one familiar with Old Testament practice, 
an anointing represents a divine dedication and a consecration to a holy office, to the Jewish mind and to the one familiar with Old Testament practice, an anointing represents a divine dedication and a consecration to a holy office. As Aaron and his sons were inducted into the priesthood, a holy ointment was prepared and used for their anointing. This anointing was their consecration. Into this anointing was their consecration into the priest's office. You can see that in Exodus chapter 30, verse 30. All right, let's look at that. Exodus 30, 30. Exodus chapter 30 and verse 30. And thou shalt anoint Aaron and his sons and consecrate them that they may minister unto me in the priest office. Anoint. That word anointing. Exodus 30 verse 30. And also Leviticus 8, 12. Leviticus chapter 8 and verse 12. And he poured of the anointing oil upon Aaron's head and anointed him to sanctify him. And he appointed the anointing oil upon Aaron's head to anoint him, to sanctify him. Leviticus 8, 12. So this anointing was their consecration into the priest office. So to the Jewish mind and to the one familiar with Old Testament practice, an anointing represents a divine dedication and a consecration to a holy office. As Aaron and his sons were inducted into the priesthood, a holy ointment was prepared and used for their anointing. This anointing was their consecration into the priest's office. Exodus 30:30 30, 30. and Leviticus 8:12. As choice was to be made in Israel, as choice was to be made in Israel of the first king. God instructed Samuel, as choice was to be made in Israel of the first king, God instructed Samuel, who found Saul, took a vial of oil and poured it over his head. 1 Samuel 10 verse 1. First Samuel chapter 10 verse 1 and Samuel took a vial of oil and poured it upon his head and kissed him and said is it not because the Lord has anointed you to be captain over his inheritance all right So as choice was to be made in Israel of the first king, God instructed Samuel, who found Saul, took a vial of oil and poured it over his head. 1 Samuel chapter 10 verse 1. A few years later, as Saul was rejected, a few years later as Saul was rejected and David was chosen to be his successor, Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed David in the midst of his brethren. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 13.
1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 13. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed David in the midst of his brethren, and the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. Um, praise God. As Elijah, Elijah approached the hour of the conclusion of his ministry, as Elijah approached the hour of the conclusion of his ministry, he was instructed by the Lord to anoint Elisha, the son of Shaphat, to be his successor. 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 16. First Kings chapter 19, verse 16. And Jehu, the son of Nimish, Nimshi, and Jehu, the son of Nimshi, shalt thou anoint to be king over Israel. And Elisha, the son of Shaphat of Abel, Mehola, shalt thou anoint to be prophet in thy room. And Jehu, the son of Nimshi, shalt thou anoint to be king over Israel. And Elisha, the son of Shaphat of Abel, Mehola, uh, shalt thou anoint to be prophet in the room. Uh, so, as Elijah approached the hour of the conclusion of his ministry, he was instructed by the Lord to anoint Elisha, the son of Shaphat, to be his successor. 1 Kings 19 and verse 16. From, three, from, these, scriptures, from these scriptures, we see that prophet, priest, and king. From these scriptures, we see that prophet, priest, and king. Prophet, priest, and king were all anointed as an official indication of their choice and dedication to their respective offices. Jesus anointing as Jesus, the great antitype of prophet, priest, and king. As Jesus, the great antitype of prophet, priest, and king stood up to preach in Nazareth. He said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me. Anointed me. Etc. Uh, Luke 4, 18. So let's go there. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he, hath, he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me for a purpose. And he said what that purpose was. So the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me. Luke 4, 18. The anointing, the anointing which came upon our great head. What the anointing which came upon our great head, Jesus Christ, chief cornerstone that the builders rejected, the anointing which came upon our great head was like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beard 
even Aaron's beard that went down to the skirts of his garments. Psalm 133, verse 2. Psalm 133, verse 2. The anointing which came on Christ, the anointing which came on Christ, flows down to the remotest member of his body who will accept the precious ointment. The anointing which came on Christ flows down to the remotest member of his body who will accept the precious ointment. Our anointing, our anointing. They who receive this joyous experience should realize that they have been consecrated and dedicated by the Almighty God himself to distinctive office and ministry. They who receive this joyous experience should realize that they have been consecrated and dedicated by the Almighty God himself to distinctive office and ministry. As prophets, we are anointed to preach, teach, and tell the good news. As prophets, we are appointed to preach, teach, and tell the good news. As priests, we are, un as prophets, we are anointed to preach, teach, and tell the good news. As priests, we are anointed to make intercession for all men. As kings, we are anointed to reign in life now and to share the throne with Jesus Christ our Lord. So as prophets, we are anointed to preach, teach, and tell the good news as prophets. As priests, we are anointed to make intercession for all men. As kings, we are anointed to reign in life now and to share the throne with Jesus Christ our Lord. Truly, this great anointing with the Holy Spirit is a most significant experience. Sealing, sealing, to be sealed, to be sealed with the Holy Spirit. 2 Corinthians 1.22 2 Corinthians 1.22, who has also sealed us, sealed us, and given the earnest of the Spirit in our hearts. To be sealed with the Holy Spirit. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 22, and also Ephesians 1.13. In whom you also trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. In whom also after that you believed, you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. And Ephesians 4.30. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption. To be sealed, to be sealed with the Holy Spirit. 2 Corinthians 1.22, Ephesians 1.13, and Ephesians 4.30. To be sealed with the Holy Spirit is to have Him to have the Holy Spirit come upon you in the capacity of shutting you in with God. To be sealed with the Holy Spirit is to have the Holy Spirit come upon you in the capacity of shutting you in with God. 
He constitutes, the Holy Spirit constitutes a seal between you and the world. As the housewife seals her canned fruit, that outside air may not penetrate and it remains preserved as long as the seal is not broken. So our lives are covered over with the Holy Spirit. As the housewife seals her canned fruit, that outside air may not penetrate, and it remains preserved as long as the seal is not broken. So our lives are covered over with the Holy Spirit seal. Our lives are covered over with the Holy Spirit seal to keep out the evil influences of this impure world and impure church. As long as this seal remains unbroken, you are preserved blameless in spirit, soul, and body unto the coming of your Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Thessalonians 5.23 And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. When Jesus was buried, the chief priest made the specular sure, sealing the stone and setting a watch matthew 27 66 all right let's look at that Twenty seven sixty six. so they went and made the specular sure sealing the stone and setting a watch That's Matthew 27, 66. This was doubtless the seal of the government. This was no doubt the seal of the government and indicated its authority. To tamper with that seal was an attack on the government itself. To tamper with that seal <clears throat> so, as long as this seal remains unbroken, you are preserved in body unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. We saw that in 1 Thessalonians 5.23. When Jesus was buried, the chief priest made the specular sure, sealing the stone and setting a watch. We saw that in Matthew 27, verse 66. This was no doubt the seal of the government and indicated its authority. To tamper with that seal was an attack on the government itself. The seal of official documents today. The seal of official documents today carries the authority, the seal of official documents today, carries the authority of the institution issuing the document. So the seal of official documents today carries the authority of the institution issuing the document. From this, we gather that he who touches us attacks the great government which has endorsed us. From this we gather that he who touches us attacks the great government which has endorsed us. Also a seal or a brand is often stamped upon an article or upon cattle 
to indicate certain ownership. Christ's ceiling and ours. Christ's ceiling and ours. Jesus, our head and example. Jesus, our head and example, was sealed by God the Father, John 6, 27. The part of himself that was in heaven. Jesus, our head and example, was sealed by God the Father, John 6, 27. Six twenty seven. Labor not for the meat which perisheth, but for that meat which endureth unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you. For him has God the Father sealed. For him has God the Father sealed. If we can learn, if you can learn aright how Christ was sealed, if we can learn aright how Christ was sealed, we shall learn how we are sealed. If you can learn aright how Christ was sealed, you shall learn how you are sealed. The sealing of Christ by the Father the sealing of Christ by the Father is the communication of the Holy Spirit in fullness to him, authorizing him unto and acting his divine power in all the acts and duties of his office. So as to evidence the presence of God with him and approbation of him again his divine power and all the acts and duties of his office so as to evidence the presence of God with him and approbation of him God's sealing of believers God's sealing of believers then is his gracious communication of the Holy Spirit unto them so as to act his divine power in them as to enable them unto all the duties of their holy calling evidencing them to be accepted with him both for themselves and others and asserting their Preservation unto eternal life. The foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal. The Lord knoweth them that are his. And let every one that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Let every one that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. 2 Timothy 2.19 2 And it is not a suggestion, it is a commandment. Let every one that nameth the name of Christ depart, depart from iniquity. Second Timothy 2, 19. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure. Uh, having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his, and let every one that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Let every one that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. It's not a suggestion, it's a commandment. And you are to know by now, according to the Holy Word of God, what's going to happen to you if you don't do it. If you do not depart from iniquity, what's going to happen? The wages of iniquity, the wages of sin, the wages of disobedience are still death. Um, 
So the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal. The Lord knoweth them that are his, and let every one that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Second Timothy chapter 2 and verse 19. Here, both ideas of ownership and preservation from evil are indicated by the seal. Right here, both ideas of ownership, both ideas of ownership and preservation from evil are indicated by the seal. So here both ideas of ownership and preservation from evil are indicated by the seal. The duration of this seal is until, the duration of this seal is until the day of redemption, Ephesians 4.30. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption. And that was Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30. So the duration of this seal is until the day of redemption. Thereafter, his protection will not be needed. Thereafter, God's protection will not be needed since we will be in the presence of God himself, removed from all danger of corruption and attack. And earnest, and earnest, three times in the New Testament, and earnest, three times in the New Testament, 2 Corinthians 1.22, three times in, in the New Testament, 2 Corinthians 1, 22. Second Corinthians 1, 22. Who hath also sealed us and given the earnest of the Spirit in our hearts. Three times in the New Testament, 2 Corinthians 1.22. And then we have 2 Corinthians 1.22. Then we have 2 Corinthians 5.5. 5. Now he that hath wrought us for the selfsame thing is God, who also has given unto us the earnest of the Spirit. And then we have Ephesians 1.14. which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of God's glory. So three times in the New Testament, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 22, 2 Corinthians 5, 5, and Ephesians 1, 14. It is stated that the experience of the Holy Spirit coming upon us is the earnest of our inheritance. This is a reference to the Old Testament practice of receiving a very small portion of that which has been purchased or promised as a token and pledge that the full purchase will be delivered in due time. By this means, 
it is indicated to us that this glorious experience, which we usually call the baptism in the Holy Spirit, by this means it is indicated to us that this glorious experience, which we usually call the baptism in the Holy Spirit, is but a sample and a foretaste of that effulgence of glory which will be ours at the coming of our Lord. Other symbols of the Holy Spirit, other symbols of the Holy Spirit, in addition to oil, a seal, and an earnest, in addition to oil, a seal, and an earnest, there are a few other symbols which are used with reference to the Holy Spirit. It is not specifically recorded that they have to do with the operation of the Holy Spirit. Uh, so in addition to oil, a seal, and an earnest, there are a few other symbols which are used with reference to the Holy Spirit. It is not specifically recorded that they have to do with the operation of the Holy Spirit as he comes in fullness upon the believer, but they are symbols of the person of the Holy Spirit in whatever capacity he manifests himself upon earth. But since they represent characteristics of the Holy Spirit, uh, we may expect them to be more manifest when the believer is baptized with the Holy Spirit. Fire. One of these symbols is fire. The children of Israel were preceded through the wilderness by a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. Exodus 13, 21 and 22. Exodus 13. 21 and 22. Exodus 13, 21 and 22. And the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of a cloud to lead them the way, and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light to go by day and night. And that was uh, Exodus 13, 21 and 22. He took not away the pillar of the cloud by day, nor the pillar of fire by night, from before the people. Exodus 13, 21 and 22. So the child, one of these symbols is fire. The children of Israel were proceeded through the wilderness by a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. Exodus 13, 21 and 22. John the Baptist said, He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. He will thoroughly purge his floor and burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. And that is Matthew 3, 11.
I indeed baptize you with water under repentance. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. And he will thoroughly purge his floor and burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. And again, that is Matthew chapter 3, verse 11 and 12. Uh, then we have Luke chapter 3, Luke chapter 3, 16, 17. Luke chapter 3, 16, 17. Luke chapter 3, beginning in verse 16 and 17. John answered, saying unto them all, I indeed baptize you with water, but one mightier than I cometh, the latchet of whose shoes I am not worthy to unloose. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor, and will gather the wheat into his garner, but the shaft he will burn with fire unquenchable. And again, that is Luke chapter 3, 16 and 17. On the day of Pentecost, on the day of Pentecost, tongues like as of fire set upon each of them, Acts chapter 2 and verse 3. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it set upon each of them. Acts chapter 2 and verse 3. Our God is a consuming fire. Our God is a consuming fire. Hebrews 12, 29. For our God is a consuming fire. Hebrews 12, 29. Nothing less, nothing less than fire can picture to us the consuming holiness of our God. Nothing less than fire can picture to us the consuming holiness of our God. All dross and impurities are burned out. All dross and impurities are burned out by his purging presence. And the soul, mind, will, and emotions, is set afire with a flaming zeal and burning passion for God and his service. Also, the fire of persecution awaits those who yield themselves, the fire of persecution awaits those who yield themselves to this baptism. Christ was, uh, also the fire of persecution awaits those who yield themselves to this baptism. Christ was driven immediately, immediately into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. The apostles shortly after Pentecost, were thrown into prison. And today, the reproach of Pentecost is still a fire that burns. But why should we fear the fire when he will be with us in the flame? But why should you fear the fire when he will be with us in the flame? Wind, Jesus said to Nicodemus, the wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh and whether it goeth. So is every one that is born of the Spirit. John chapter 3 and verse 8. The very word, 
Pneuma, P-N-E-U-M-A, Pneuma, which as it refers to the Holy Spirit is translated spirit, is in reality the ordinary Greek word for wind or air. Jehovah breathed upon Adam and he became a living soul, mind, will, and emotion. Christ breathed upon his disciples and said, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. John 20, 22. The Spirit was his very breath or life. On the day of Pentecost, there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled all the house where they were sitting and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost the Holy Spirit is around us constantly and is everywhere as the very air we breathe he is our very life in God when the air moves a delightful breeze is the result. When the Holy Spirit moves, especially as he did upon the prophets of old, he is represented as a wind. He comes as a great torrent of air and fills waiting believers. And we have water. Water. To the woman at the Samaritan well, Jesus used the figure of water. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. God is a spirit. And they that worship God must worship God in spirit and in truth. John 4.14 But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst, but the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. And uh, John 4:14. 4, and then we have verse 24. God is a spirit, and they that worship God must worship God in spirit and in, and in truth. So that was John 4, verse 14, and verse 24. On the last day of the feast, he cried, if any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this spake he of the Spirit. John 7, 37 to 39. John 7, 37 to 39. In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified. And again, that was John uh, chapter 7, verse 37 to 39. For I will pour water upon him that is thirsty, 
and floods upon the dry ground. I will pour my spirit upon thy seed, and my blessing upon thine offspring. Isaiah 44, 3. Water is absolutely essential to all physical life. Water washes, and so does the Holy Spirit. It refreshes, and so does the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is represented in the eternal state as the river of life that flows out from under the throne of God and of the Lamb, the life of the heavenly city. He is the river of life now to thirsty souls. Then we have rain and dew, rain and dew, as he is distilled from heaven, he is likened unto rain and dew. He shall come down like rain upon the mown grass. Psalm 72, 6. Psalm 72, 6. He shall come down like rain upon the mown grass as showers that water the earth. And that was Psalm chapter 72, verse 6. As the dew of Hermon, and as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion. Psalm 133, verse 3. Psalm 133, verse 3. As the dew of Hermon, and as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord commanded the blessing, even life forevermore. And it was Psalm 133, verse 3. He shall come unto us as the rain, as the latter and former rain unto the earth. Hosea 6, verse 3. see here uh, let's see uh, I will be as the dew unto Israel now yeah he shall come unto us as the rain as the latter and former rain unto the earth Hosea 6 and verse 3 Isaiah 6, verse 3. Then shall we know if we follow on to know the Lord. His going forth is prepared as the morning, and he shall come unto us as the rain, as the latter and former rain unto the earth. Hosea chapter 6, verse 3. And then we have, I will be as the dew. I will be as the dew unto Israel. Hosea 14, 5. I will be as the dew unto Israel. Hosea 14, 5. I will be as the dew unto Israel. He shall grow as the lily and cast forth his roots as Lebanon. Hosea 14, verse 5. The Bible also says, For with stammering lips and another tongue, Will he speak unto this people, to whom he said, This is the rest wherewith you may cause the weary to rest, and this is the refreshing 
Isaiah 28, verse 11 and 12. Isaiah 28, verse 11 and 12. For with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people, to whom he said, This is the rest wherewith you may cause the weary the rest, and this is the refreshing. Yet they would not hear, they would not believe. Isaiah 28, 11 and 12. How gently and refreshingly, how gently and refreshingly he descends upon the soul. How gently and refreshingly he descends upon the soul. How gently and refreshingly he descends upon the soul, and how life-giving is his coming. Dove. John saw the Holy Spirit like a dove, descending and remaining upon him. John saw the Holy Spirit like a dove, descending and remaining upon him. John 1.32 John 1, 32, and John bare record, saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it abode upon him. John saw the Holy Spirit like a dove descending and remaining upon him. John 1, 32, tender, gentle, pure, and harmless. Tender, gentle, pure, and harmless like a dove the holy spirit is easily frightened or grieved and as the dove is a universal symbol of peace so the holy spirit is god's agent to bring peace to the human heart a very fitting smile for the blessed holy spirit Father God, we thank you for your word forever, eternally, established in heaven, comes down um, and dwells among men in the earth. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for opening up our eyes to see all that you would have us to see, opening up our ears to hear all that you would have us to hear. In the wonderful, mighty name of the Son, God the Son, Jesus Christ, concerning these matters. And we love the people. We give you praise and thanks for the people and all that you have done in their lives, all that you are currently doing in their lives, and all that you shall do in their lives. And we just want to go ahead and praise and thank you for it until we see the manifestation of it. We know, we know, we know you are the Holy One of Israel. You are the glue that keeps everything together. The chief cornerstone which the builders rejected. And we love you. In Jesus' name.